Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 14 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to cover recursive functions. So you may ask yourself, what is a recursive function? Well, it is a function that calls itself. Then you may ask yourself, why would you ever want to do that? Actually, certain problems can be solved more easily through recursion. Some things to think about is that every recursive function must contain a condition that stops the process of calling the function to execute over and over again. Then what we need to do is break down solving a problem by performing multiple simple calculations repetitively versus writing one large block of code. Let's take calculating a factorial as an example. Now, whenever you are calculating a factorial, you would basically just multiply 3 times 2 times 1. So what I'm going to do is show you the code behind actually doing that. So let's go and create a function, and let's call it factorial, and say that it receives a value. Now, like I said, every recursive function must contain a condition that is going to keep the function from calling itself any longer. So that condition is going to be right here. So when the value of num is less than or equal to 1, we are going to return a value of 1. However, in all other circumstances, I'm going to get result. And that is going to be num times factorial num minus 1. And you can see eventually num will have a value in which it meets this condition and we stop calling the function. Then we will return the result. And then what we can do is say print call factorial of 4. And if we run it, you can see that that multiplication went through. So what exactly is happening here? Basically what you are doing is you're getting the value of 4 right here. You are then right here subtracting one from that, which is what we have right here. That then goes down to this line. So we take the three, factorial of two, we figure out what the factorial of two is down here. And here you see the situation in which we have a value of one. That means we are no longer going to call the factorial. So we have that one right here, which comes from this line of code right there. We multiply two times that value to get a value of two. That two goes up here. We multiply those together to get a value of 6. That 6 goes up here. We multiply 4 times it to get a final answer of 24. And that is exactly how we can do this pretty complicated sort of operation in just a few lines of code. So now what I want you to do is take what you have learned and try to solve this problem. So how I am going to test that you learned something from the code that I just provided is to have you calculate Fibonacci numbers. Now to calculate Fibonacci numbers, we are going to be summing the two previous values to calculate the next item. And it's going to basically work like this. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 plus 2 equals 3. And so forth and so on. And as a little hint here, what I'm going to do is show you that the Fibonacci sequence is basically going to be defined with a function being equal to the function minus 1 plus the function minus 2. Where a value of the function 0 is going to be equal to 0, and whenever the function receives a value of 1, it's going to return a value of 1. Okay, so there are some tips on how to perform this calculation. Now pause the video and give it a try. Alright, so hopefully you got that. And if not, I'm going to give you the code right now. So I'm going to define, I'm going to call this fib, and it's going to receive some value if n the value that was passed in is equal to 0, then I'm going to return a value of 0. Else if n is equal to 1, just as I stated, return a value of 1. Else, we are going to call the function again. And what we're going to do is we're going to say the result is equal to fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2 and then we are going to return our result. What you're then going to be able to do is come down here and say print fib3 and why don't we go and do that again. Fib4, save it, run it, and you'll see that you get a value of 2 and a value of 3 returned. 
So if you want to see an example of how this is going to work, let's say we give it a value of 3. Well, that 3 is going to come down here. It's going to be transformed by this into 2 and 1. See, we subtract 1 in both situations. Both are going to be encapsulated in this area. This is going to give you a value of 0. This is going to give you a value of 1, which is going to be added to this guy right here. And anytime we pass 1 inside, we get a value of 1 which gives us our final answer of 2. All right, so that is how that works. Hopefully you got it. If you didn't, don't worry about it. The only goal here is to get you in thinking new ways and to get you to understand the final problem. So now what I want you to do is to solve another problem. Previously, we generated one number in a Fibonacci sequence. This time, I want you to ask the user to define how many numbers they want and then I want you to display them in order. And just remember all of the rules that we set off right here. And you're going to be using this guy once again. And if you want an example of some sample output, this is basically what your program is going to look like. So what you can do is pause your video right now and give it a go. Otherwise, I'm going to solve it right now. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to use the function that I used previously. So this guy right here, there's no reason to throw that away. So let's just get rid of all this stuff. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say num of fib values is going to be equal to whatever the user gives us. So I'll say input and how many Fibonacci values, values should be found. And that's just squiggly lines under there because I don't have enough spaces after the function. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to use a while loop to define this. I'm going to start at 1, and I'm going to say while i is less than the number of values requested, I want to continue to find more. I'm going to say while i is less than the number of Fibonacci values, I'm going to call the fib function. So fib value is equal to fib i and then I'm going to print the fib value and then I'm going to increment the value of i and that is it so we can save it and run it and you can say how many you want so I'm going to say that I want 10 and it goes and it creates it all right so cool beans hopefully you guys enjoyed that and you got close to answering that and in the next video, I'm going to teach you how to read and write files, and I'm also going to cover tuples. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below.